Hey there, what's up? Andre here from PSD Box, and today I have a new tutorial for you guys. I want to show you how I made uh, this simple manipulation uh, using three stock images. Um, it's quite original, very creative, uh, but as I said, it's not very difficult to, to create this. I'm using Photoshop CC uh, for this tutorial, but you can use any Photoshop version, you can uh, do it. And uh, you'll find the links to the stock images that I used for this on psdbox.com, on the video description, on, and on the, also on the video notes uh, on YouTube, you'll find the links that will take you there, so you can download them. And that's all. I hope you will like it, and let's start. So we're going to start with... Control Command O, which will open our file browser. And I'm gonna start with this background image of this cityscape. It's from unsplash.com, but you can use any other image that you want. Uh, I just like this uh, cityscape and the colors of it and the lighting. So I used this one. And before we move on, I wanna add uh, just a little effect here using the exposure adjustment and I want to add the offset to 0 0.0146. Um, this will add light on the shadows and the gamma correction to 0 0.98. Um, take a look at the before and after. It just creates a sort of faded uh, effect, washed shadows there. And I like that and that's why I used this, uh, that's why I created this effect. Uh, let's move on and open our water droplet image, which is this one. I'm going to copy it with control command C and paste it here with control command V and uh, with control T you, you can open the, um, can select the free transform and then right click and choose flip vertical. And I'm going to place it right over there. I'm going to make it a bit smaller, pressing and holding the shift and alt key you can uh, size from the center and I'm going to put it right there and next I want to change this to uh, convert it into a smart object and the reason why I do this is because I will apply levels to this and I want to be able to modify that if I want and that way I save some space because the levels uh, will be applied to this smart object and they will be converted into a smart filter which saves some space here on the layers palette. So I'm going to press Control L or Command L on a Mac and this will open my levels um, uh, window here my levels panel and I will change the midtones to 2.55 This will add light on the on the shadows well on the midtones it makes them brighter as you can see so 2.55 Now I want to uh, also change the black point. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see it uh, as you can see when I clicked OK a new smart filters um, sub layer appeared here uh, if I double click I can open this again and edit it. I also want to change the black point because uh, what I'm gonna do next will affect this shadow over here. Before applying uh, this, uh, before modifying the black point I'm gonna make that modification so you can see why it's not working. So I'm gonna double click and I want to use the blend if options but well actually let's create the layer mask and try to blend this a little and before we uh, move uh, here on the blend if section so i'm going to create a layer mask for this water droplet um, layer and i'm i will use the gradient tool black to white and i'm going to create a gradient from over here to down here so we have a very soft transition now for this sides here i'm going to use the brush tool with opacity 50 percent and a bit smaller and just paint with black here to f fade these things away, uh, the edges. Actually, um, if you keep the size the same as your canvas, you don't have to uh, blend the edges. Maybe it's gonna be a little easier that way for you. Um, maybe even dropping the flow to like 20%. Um, maybe it works a bit a bit better. Um, as you can see I'm painting and it's working a little slow and that's because I'm using the full resolution of the images and I'm also recording the video. So I um, have this really quick mask here, uh, it's not the best in the world but anyways. Now let's move into the blend if section as I said. I'm gonna double click on the layer to open the layer styles panel 
And here on the bottom, on the blending options, we have the blend if section right over here. And here we can say, um, we can move into the channels, but we're not going to do that. We're going to stay on the gray. And here what we can do is, um, we can say that if we don't want this black areas to, to be visible, we can blend them. So I can move this to the right and you can see they disappear. They're not blended. That's why we had the, if this layer has black areas, don't blend them. The problem is you can see uh, the edges here are very rough. You can uh, solve that a bit if you press and hold the Alt key and click on this um, mark over here and split it. And this will create a softer transition, but it's still not okay because it's disappearing uh, completely and we don't have that shadow which um, makes it look more realistic. So. Let's leave that like that for now and move back to the levels here. That's why I said I wanted to uh, modify the black point. In other words, what I want to do is make it a bit brighter. So I'm going to use the output to 55 there. Um, remember, this only affects this layer of the water because I applied it as a smart object and now it's a smart filter. And now if I zoom in at 100%, you can see that this black point is now a bit brighter. And I'm going to I'm going back to the layers style here and now I'm gonna split this with the alt key and move it to 0. Point, well to um, 21 sorry like that and the white one I'm gonna move it I'm gonna I'm gonna click OK before I'm moving this because I forgot to change the blend mode um, I'm gonna use the multiply blend mode See that now it blends a lot better than using the normal blend mode. Okay, so the blend mode of this water will be to multiply. Now let's go back to the blend if and take care of the white areas. Actually, I'm going to zoom out a little more. Sorry for zooming in and out so much. Um, so here on the whites, again, we're going to press and hold the Alt key. Click over here and move this to the left until we get to 190 more or less. The more you move it, the more uh, you uh, remove um, the brighter areas from, from the image to about 190. Be okay. Because we still wanna have some of the, we need the ripples uh, here basically. And something like that. And here you can see that the water is not blending very well with the background. So now that I have the blend mode switched, I can get the brush tool again and paint with the lower opacity and flow. Uh, let's say 30, um, 30 and 20. Um, just pressing the three on the numeric keypad on your keyboard, you will change the opacity. And if you also pre press and hold the shift key and then you press, you will change the flow and just blend this just a little more. Be careful and not not to remove uh, this little droplet over here. I'm gonna paint back part of it. I'm gonna zoom in to 100% and just paint with white over it to recover this right there. I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna duplicate the background layer and put it on top of my, I'm going to press Ctrl command J and put it on top of my water and clip, clip it to it. And what I'm going to do next is change the blend mode to color. And you can see that now it takes the color of, of the background, which is nice. I'm going to drop the opacity to 80% and see how that looks. I still want to have some of the, of the original bluish tone there, but not too much. 70. And it looks better. Okay, take a look before and after, before and after. It looks better with this, with the same tones as the sky and that way it looks like the sky is like liquid. Okay, now it's time to add the woman. Um, the hardest part was this, blending this part here uh, with the sky. So for the woman, I used an image that I already have cropped from a different tutorial, from a tutorial that I made back in 2014. And uh, that's why I don't have to extract this from the original background, but you'll have to do it. Uh, on, the, on the hair, simply just leave some space and then use a one pixel brush with a hardness 100%, size one pixel. 
uh, opacity and flow 100% and just, just sample from there and paint like that. Um, but make sure you have the spacing set to like 1% or something like that. And um, on a new layer, you can uh, just paint the hair like that. It's not very difficult. Anyway, this is going to be very small, uh, the woman, and it's not going to be that visible. So I'm going to paste her right there. In this case, the resolution of the image is very big. So it's going to be a bit more visible. But anyway, I'm going to make it smaller like so for higher impact. I'm going to place her right over there. And you can leave her like that or you can flip her vertically. It depends on what you like. I think it this position looks a bit um, weird, but I'm going to leave her like that. And I'm going to name this layer woman. And I'm going to create a new layer now on top of that. And I'm going to set it to screen. And let's use a soft brush. I just want to create some glow over the woman's uh, body. Let's sample a color like this, for example, and see how that works. I want something a bit more saturated and more yellowish like this. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks a bit better, but a bit darker. The darker the tone with the screen blend mode, the less effect you will get. So I just want to uh, just want to create a glow like that over there and probably clip it and see how that looks maybe a bit better. That's too strong. Let's leave it to 50% the opacity of the layer. Okay. And let's move on and make some final adjustments. One other thing that I did um, is I duplicated the background layer again. I'm going to create a copy, drag it on top of everything and change the blend mode back to normal. And what I did is I used the filter and I made it like, um, I don't know, I don't remember the filter that I used. I think I used the, one of the distort filters, like the pinch, yeah, just to make something like this and then make it really small and apply the filter again. And this will create this sort of bulge um, round look on my image and I made it really small like that and I put it inside this droplet over here and I just maybe it's too small now like that and I'm gonna flip it vertically and I'm gonna drop the opacity create the layer mask and just delete everything that it's not that it's not above my droplet over there. Now I'm going to switch colors and paint it back. Maybe the bottom part, I don't need it. And probably move it a bit lower. Just to have like the reflection of the of this um, city inside the inside the bowl. Uh, I made it really quick, but maybe you can use it in a blend mode like overlay or something like that. No, overlay will not work because that's white in the white area inside. It will make it uh, go away, but you can leave it on normal and have it like that. Let's make the final adjustments. I just have a few, like uh, three adjustment layers. First is a gradient map. Um, I wanted to stick with this color tones. So I used um, the sepia four preset for this on the photographic toning uh, pack and I set the blend mode to hue at 20% like that then I use the color lookup if you don't have the color lookup on your Photoshop uh, it's not really that big of a deal and I use the candlelight adjustment this is a preset that comes with uh, with this adjustment Set the blend mode to normal and opacity 10%. And then the last one, a curves adjustment. And I went into the blue channel and set, I made a split tone effect. On the bottom one, I have an output of 22. And on the top one, an output of 231. This creates this split tone effect with blue on the shadows and yellow on the highlights. 
and on the red channel we have on the bottom here on the shadows we have the output set to 8 and on the top for the highlights output 246 this gap that you can see here on the histogram is because of the layers because we uh, modified the black point um, if I deactivate this uh, you can see that this goes back to normal okay so that's why we have that gap over there okay now we are done with this that's how I created this uh, simple manipulation I made it a bit quick but if you take your time you uh, you can polish the details a lot better than I did here. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I would like to see your results. If you use Instagram, use the hashtag PSDBox or on Facebook, you can uh, tag your images with uh, hashtag PSDBox as well. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next tutorial.